Am I Joel? Because I'm about to literally show you guys at least like 20 weapons. Welcome to this new episode of Battle Tips featuring weapon bases. Psh, 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 psh. Now, much like the special bases, the weapon bases are a base set that you are able to gain access to by playing the Battlecon Armory expansion. With these special weapon bases, you are able to modify your character's kit, possibly sub out some of your weaker bases for potentially awesomer bases that not only make you look cool and do more cool things, but they also let you make terrible references to old video games and series that you may like. Now, they practically follow the same rule set that the special bases do, and when it comes to dealing with what cards to swap out and how economic you have to be with them, I will talk about that in the last video for this series. Remember, this is the Armory series of videos wherein I talk about certain card sets and culminate in how to build a character. But for now, let's talk about the weapon bases, shall we? First up is Yo-Yo. Yo-Yo is a mid-range, mediocre stat attack that is very good at setting you up because of the effects on it giving you bonus stats, and allowing you to reposition to get a big hit in during the next beat. Hence, it is very good on characters who need setup to perform big payout attacks, and it's good against characters who need setup to do their payout attacks, as well as middlers as the extra stats can benefit you very well. Next up is Cape Sweep. Cape Sweep is an amazing attack that has almost magical range 1 to 3 with its start of beat effect and it allows you to dodge opponents. Literally, like if you hit with this thing, opponents can hit you. At 4 priority, that's really, really powerful given that the range on it is freaking amazing. This is good on almost anyone who can make this thing hit or have enough speed to make this thing a very good attack. Uh, it's good against anyone who's slower than you as, as soon as you hit they miss. It's completely amazing and I really really love this base. Especially because the, the, the art looks cool. Flippy flippy. Next up is Ninja Star. Ninja Star is a long range attack that doesn't hit hard but it comes out really fast. And its effects allow you to close the gap, just in case you need to. It's good on characters who don't have a lot of long range options and want to close the gap because they're mostly melee. It's good against, well you guessed it, rangers and preferably characters without a lot of stun guard as it lets you stun them really well. Next up is Holy Water. Holy Water is a brawling dodge kind of base that allows you to dodge and then hit the opponent ignoring their soak. This is very very good given that it allows you to dodge the attack, which is very very good. Uh, just note that it has mediocre stats, so watch out for that. It's good on characters who can push its power and priority up, making it really powerful, and of course, characters who want to dodge their opponents. Who is it good against? That's also simple. Characters who have lots of soak, juggernauts, and don't have a lot of hit confirm, juggernauts. So basically, juggernauts. Next up is Boomerang. Boomerang is a long, long range attack that allows you to get it back into your hand along with the style that you paired with it. Just note that you don't recycle if that happens. Now that condition is that you don't have to move on that beat, which is fair since, you know, it allows you to repeatedly spam this attack. It's good on characters who have one really amazing style that they want to continuously exploit. <clears throat> Clockwork. <clears throat> and it's also good against characters who have a lot of range and can get away from you really often. Next up is Smoke Bomb and it's kind of like the cousin to Ninja Star. You see Ninja Star is long range but not super long range. Smoke Bomb practically does the same thing, allowing you to come out fast, make opponents miss, and reposition yourself, preferably closer to them. However, it does have different range, meaning that it hits farther away opponents but doesn't hit melee opponents anymore. It's good on characters who, again, need range or want an easy way to stun their opponents, and it's good against rangers who are away from you like almost all the time. Now the next three bases are all basically the same thing, get it? Basically. Uh, they all have decent range, they all have great defensive stun guard, they all have ignore soak, 
They all cost you two life, they all deal a lot of damage, and they're all moderately fast. However, they each have a unique on-hit effect that distinguishes them from the other two. So, this basically means that it will be really good on a character that benefits from the on-hit effect. And generally speaking, it's just such a good card that it's good on almost anyone because it has something for almost anyone. Range, power, stun guard. In fact, the only thing it's missing really is speed. So anybody who needs anything but speed will want this base. Uh, now, who is it good against? Well, since it's good for almost everyone, that same case applies to that it's good against almost everyone. Simple as that. Now, let's start off with Ninja Fire Scroll. The on hit effect allows you to ignore the opponent's stun guard knight speed. This makes it really good on characters who don't have a lot of power or characters who repeatedly want to stun their opponents. Who is it good against? Opponents who have lots of stun guard. <clears throat> that means juggernauts. <clears throat> and opponents who don't want to be stunned because of other things like their unique ability or certain moves that they have. Next up is Ninja Ice Scroll, and this one allows you to lower your opponent's priority the next beat. This is very good if you want to set up on the opponent, and that means it's really good on characters who want setups on the opponent, have big payout attacks, or have middling stats and want to be faster than the opponent the next beat. Who is it good against? It's good against middlers when it comes to priority, as usually making a really fast speedster slower doesn't really change much, and making a really slow juggernaut even slower doesn't really change much. And finally, we have Ninja Spark Scroll. Ninja Spark Scroll uh, has you lowering your opponent's power during the next beat. This is very good for juggernauts and defensive characters, and it lowers your opponent's potential damage, meaning you can possibly soak everything up with your styles, or at least make sure that your stun guard is better, right? However, uh, it's very good against characters like Juggernauts because you can get the on-hit effect off and it lowers their effective damage. In fact, it's practically good against anybody who's just slower than you. Next up is Swordbreaker, and Swordbreaker is basically a grasp alternative. You see, it has the same stats, it has this thing that lets you move. However, on hit it allows you to reduce your opponent's power by two. And that's really, really good because if you look at it properly, lowering your opponent's power technically counts as getting soaked. Think about that. That's crazy. That's really, 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 really good. And this is really, really good on characters who have enough range to make this thing hit consistently. Uh, but it's good against almost everyone because lowering everyone's power is amazing regardless. However, do note that they have to be slower than you are for this to work. Next up is Mic Drop! I was planning to literally drop my mic and then I realized how that would completely mess up my audio for the entire video because when I edit these things, I edit the entire audio piece at one same time. Regardless, my drop is a long range base that is very good at getting out fast and can potentially stun opponents if you're good at insulting them. I'm not kidding, that's what the card text says. Now, um, remember that it's really, 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 really good on characters who have lots of plus power and of course need the range slash speed to stun opponents out. However, it's very good against opponents who are always at range and possibly opponents who have lots of defenses. As an added note, it does have an end of beat movement effect, allowing you to reposition for a better beat next beat. Next up is Lawnmower, and Lawnmower is a mid-range attack with middling stats, but it allows you to have high defense and reposition yourself afterwards. It's very, very interesting and good on characters who want to dodge their opponents and have enough stats to make those middling stats into great stats. On the other hand, it's really good against characters who don't have a lot of hit confirm and are generally slow. So basically, juggernauts. Next up is Chainsaw, and Chainsaw is a mid-range attack that has decent power but is very slow and has stun guard too which makes it decently defensive. It also ignores soak and stun guard which is very very weird because it's a slow attack. Uh, it does also let you reposition yourself which is very cool. Uh, when it comes to using this base, I highly suggest it on characters who either have enough defense to make the stun guard to matter or have enough speed to make this thing super fast so that you can stun out opponents. 
Now it's good against anybody who's slower than you. So that usually means juggernauts in most cases. Hammer time is kind of like a riskier, harder hitting chainsaw. Uh, it has less range, it loses the stun guard, and it loses the end of beat advance effect uh, for one power. Honestly, I don't think it's super worth it to take this over Chainsaw because oftentimes the one power isn't worth all the other benefits that Chainsaw gives you. However, it's practically like Chainsaw. It's good on characters who have enough range and stats to make it matter. And on the other hand, it's good against slower opponents like Juggernauts. Next up is Machete Chop. Machete Chop has the same stats as Grasp, but the on-hit effect is really good. If you hit with this thing, you can put Machete Chop back into your hand, and then the style cycles by itself. This is really powerful as it basically increases the number of options in your hand. That's super good in a game like Battlecon, trust me. Uh, it's good on characters that have hit confirm and stats to make this thing matter, but it's also good against almost everyone because again, getting more options is amazing. Next up is Nunchaku. What the? Nunchaku is very interesting in that it has medium range, is not super hard hitting, and it's moderately fast. Now the passive effect is what brings this thing over the top because it gives opponents power minus two. Now. Remember how I said earlier that Power Minus technically counts as Soak? This thing technically has Soak too. That's absurd! Have Stun Guard 1 on any of your styles and you get Magical Stun Guard 3 and this thing just turns uh, confusingly powerful. It's really, really good. I highly, highly like it as well. Now, it's good on almost everyone as Soak 2 is amazing on everyone, but uh, Juggernauts with high amounts of Power Plus are able to benefit from this the most. Uh, who is it good against? Again! Everyone, because Soak 2 is good against almost everyone. Pentos is an awkwardly ranged, moderately fast base that basically makes opponents miss if you hit them. Now this is good on characters who can modify their ranges very well, be it because of range modifications or movement effects, as that's who is this made for because range 3 is super awkward. Uh, it's good against, again, almost anyone, but specifically characters who don't have a lot of movement as they might not get out of this range very easily. Next up is Donkey Kick. Yeehaw! Donkey Kick is a melee, powerful, slow, but defensive brawling style that allows you to hit an opponent literally to the opposite end of the board. Now that's very powerful as it usually results in the opponent missing. It's good on characters who can make the stats matter. Uh, stun guard or more plus powers make this really good, but priority also makes it very, very good as the on hit only really matters if you push them before they attack. But regardless whether or not you're fast enough, if you put them super far away from you that during the next beat, they'll have a hard time hitting regardless. Now it's good against, guess who? Slow opponents who don't have a lot of hit confirm. Like a lot of these bases are just made to mess with juggernauts. What is with that? Next up is Scooter Pop. Scooter Pop is a moderately good base with drive stats, but the interesting thing is that it's actually a long range attack. Uh, the main game plan is basically to get in, pop, and then get out. That's it. It's good on characters who want to dodge their opponents and have enough priority to make this thing fast enough to be consistent. And of course, it's good against slow characters who don't have a lot of hit confirm. Rip, rip, rip juggernauts. Rip juggernauts. Rip and pepperoni. Rip. Finally, we have Grenade. Grenade is a very interesting base uh, because it lets you put a marker on the board at range 4 and then the spaces on that marker and adjacent to the marker are the range of this attack. Meaning that in all technicality, it's range 3 to 5. But it also means that no matter how much your opponent moves you or how much you yourself move, the range remains the same. Which is very, very good considering that a lot of the bases in the special and weapon base sets move you around a lot. Uh, not only that, but it's stun immune and has high power. What could you not like? It's good on characters who move around often or are susceptible to missing due to moving around a lot. 
And it's also good for characters who have awkward ranges as range X on this thing means that you get to override those pesky minimum ranges or those weird range conditions. It's also good against opponents who tend to move you around a lot to dodge your attacks. If they don't move out of the range of the marker, they still get hit regardless. As you can see, there's a lot of bases in this weapon base set, and quite honestly, I can't tell you guys the use of all of them immediately. There are multiple uses to them, and of course, it really depends on your character. All I gave you guys was a short overview and brief guide on how to use them, as there are obviously certain stats and effects that certain types of characters want to use. Now, one interesting thing I found about this specific set was that it was really limited. It seemed to be that a lot of the weapons were things that let you counter other things, as opposed to the special base set, which had things that were just really good overall. So it seems that the weapon base set is about well, having weapons against specific kinds of characters that you have a hard time dealing with. And of course, it's just filled with fun because you have things like mic drop. So um, note that that seems to be an overarching theme when it comes to the weapon base set in that they have a lot of things that are meant to alleviate one of your weaknesses or alleviate your weakness against certain archetypes of characters. So think about that when picking from this base set as oftentimes seeing who your opponent is and what they're doing can inform you as to which specific bases from this set you might want. Uh, I hope you guys all love this very, very short episode of Battle Tips. This episode of Battle Tips is very, very hard to make sometimes because of my schedule and because I have to make battle guides the week after. But I do hope you guys liked it and learned something from it. Now, if you got interested by this video and want to learn more about Level 99 games or the Armory expansion, or maybe you want to buy this stuff, go in the description down below and everything will be there. You want to talk to me or any of the other Battlecon veterans? Description down below. It will be there, I promise. Now, you want to... Give me any suggestions, ask questions, check my email down below, or write a comment down below, and I'll sure to try to answer you as soon as possible. I might be doing some things when you reply, so it'll probably be within a day. Promise, within a day. Uh, that's pretty much it. Without further ado, don't forget your special action, and thank you, World of Indians. Thank you, and good night.